than one and a half million kids in this country sue up every fall to play football. And a lot of those kids come back to the game year after year. Well, tonight, one local woman whose son played football for 12 years has a story for all of those families, yours included, and it's important. It's a struggle to raise somebody whose brain is just kind of unwiring. Karen Ziegel's son, Patrick, loved to play football. His dad was a football player. He played for the Redskins. He wanted to be just like his dad. Patrick Risha was 10 when he first played for the Elizabeth Forward Termites. He worked hard, took even harder hits, and grew up to become a record-setting high school running back, a Channel 4 Operation Football Student Athlete of the Week. It was everything on a Friday night for these games, and I cheered him through that. Dartmouth recruited him. He loved the game. But by his senior year of college, a full 12 seasons of playing since those first days with the Elizabeth Forward Termites, Karen's only boy started to change. It was odd behaviors, um, irrational behaviors in some cases. And we never made the connection that it could be something that was 10 years prior. He couldn't concentrate. He had no drive, no purpose. He was having anger issues and he was just not willing to work and get out of his shell. And that's how it was for Pat Risha during the 10 years after he graduated Dartmouth. His girlfriend gave birth to their son, Peyton, but still Patrick drifted until one warm late summer day when this shining light went dark. It was September. Patrick called his mom and with her on the phone, he hanged himself with his dog's leash. 100 grams. Less than an hour away in the bowels of UPMC Presby. Oh, Mike Webster's brain looked very much like this. Neuropathologist Dr. Ronald Hamilton was already a decade. But it's all coordinated. Into groundbreaking research into CTE. Abnormal is this kind of case in which we have all of these brown splotches. Hamilton sees it. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy here at the cellular level. All of these little brown. He and his colleagues have found signs of CTE in 90% of the professional football players whose brains they've autopsied. It's going to be who plays the hardest and how hard they play and how many times they refused to stay down. But concussions don't cause CTE. Ah, Subconcussive blows do. All those lesser hits during practice, all those times the body stops, but the brain keeps moving. What causes CTE is what? Blows to your head. Hamilton works with Dr. Bennett Amalu, who discovered CTE in Steeler great Mike Webster. And this blows to your head could cause damage on the cellular level yeah. without symptoms. Yes. These are the subconcussive blows. Dr. Hamilton says football players suffer thousands of subconcussive blows during their careers. Even if you eliminated all the concussions from professional and amateur football, there would still be thousands and thousands of repetitive subconcussive hits that are an inherent part of the game. You cannot take it out of there. And once the brain gets hurt, there's no healing it. It's the connection. And that's permanent damage. That doesn't get better. This is a little bit. Hamilton autopsies brains in the basement of Presby's morgue. And they're filled up with fluid. He says enlarged ventricles can indicate CTE, but the disease's diagnosis is done microscopically. He takes slices of brain tissue and uses a stain that identifies proteins that destroy the brain in CTE. Neurons. Normal brain tissue looks like this. In CTE, Hamilton sees brown clumps of tau proteins, and it's those clusters of brown proteins that are the telltale. They are what eat away at the brain's cells. There's no helmet that will prevent subconcussive injuries of your brain. And people, parents need to know that. So Karen Ziegel does now in a searing hindsight that every day reminds her that she watched it slowly happen. I made a mistake in letting one of them play a game that was destroying his brain slowly. I'm just sorry I didn't know. And I, w I think every mom wants to keep their kids out of harm's way. And football for him was harm's way. For Karen, there was no final hug, no last kiss from her boy, no I love you more than words can say. I tell him every day that I'm just sorry I didn't know 
what I know now. Very powerful, Wendy. Um, you know, I was struck by the fact when we talk about CTE, we talk about retired NFL players mm -hmm. in their 40s and 50s. Right. Not young people who don't play in the NFL right. in their late 20s and early 30s. This is what you're saying. Yeah. This is where this is going, mm -hmm. and this is why we're talking about it, right? And how about this? The NFL is starting to listen to Dr. Hamilton's research. That's right. Consider the NFL's own estimate now that nearly 3 in 10 retired NFL players will develop neurological problems, including CTE. Now, Karen Ziegel doesn't want to stop the game. She wants to promote safer play when kids are young, when their brains are still growing. So she has started a nonprofit. It is incredible. It's called StopCTE.org, and it advocates that kids play flag football until the age of 14. You can learn more about their work under the on TV tab of WTAE.com.